All right. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Happy Thursday. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. Uh, we'll be starting in maybe a minute, not even. I'll let a few more people come on in. I see lots of people are, are flying in right now. And while we're waiting, uh, if you see a polls tab on the right, we asked a few questions. Uh, do you have your own direct booking site? Where are you from? Please uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. We'd love to see if you answer your poll, answer the poll questions, please. And we'll get started in just a minute. And if we have any Team Boostly people in here, just put Team Boostly so I can recognize some faces. All right. Oh, plenty of people have a, a direct booking website. Add that as a poll. Sherry says Team Boostly. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. We have we have one. We have one. That's lovely. Oh, we've got Ralph. I can I can see these coming in now. Elizabeth. Ah, oh, hello, everybody. Nice to see some familiar names. All right. Well, we can get started as more people come on in. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is David Jacoby with Hostfully. We also have Brad Cartier with Hostfully. You know, who is our head of marketing, but did not put himself on this slide, Brad. And it is uh, our pleasure and honor to have Mark Simpson with Boostly. Uh, this is a slightly different webinar from other ones where we kind of made it a little more open-ended. So uh, we um, chatted on some Facebook groups and emailed a lot of our users to ask, uh, to ask them if they have questions for Mark. So it's kind of a, a fun AMA, Ask Me Anything style. And we have some, some fun questions already that we received in advance. Thank you, everyone. And please feel free to ask your questions in the question bar, and we'll be following that. Uh, and we'll get to as many as we can as well. So before we get started with our uh, main attraction, let me humor you with just a couple minutes about Hostfully for those who are not familiar with Hostfully. We are a vacation rental property management software that helps you really run your business tip to tail. So we have two standalone platforms, property management platform, digital guidebooks. You can get one, you can get the other, you can get both on the property management platform side. We have direct integrations with Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, a bunch of other channels, a great pipeline feature, which is unique to the industry where you can see all your guests and have different prompts to move them from one stage to the next of where they're at. Uh, we have a beautiful outside of the box uh, direct booking site that integrates beautifully with Boostly. So maybe Mark can talk a little bit about that later, um, but the, 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 the two combined will really increase your direct bookings. Uh, automated messages, reports, analytics, uh, owner portal, the whole nine yards to help you run your vacation rental business. And then we also have the standalone digital guidebook. So it's a beautiful platform to make it easy to share important information to your guests about their trip. So check-in details, directions, house manual information, and all your favorite recommendations. Uh, we have lots of great branding features, really easy to scale. Uh, the whole nine yards. And we also have a print version as well. So contact list, especially this year, has been really popular. It makes it easy to send in advance. Uh, but if you're old school, uh, we also have a beautiful print version and you can offer both. We've been winning awards. It's been great. So uh, we won uh, Matt Landau's VRNB Keystone Award the first year they had it for best vacation rental software. And then they just released um, the Keystone winners again recently. And we won again. So we're back to back winners. One of the evaluators, Terry White, he said that Hostfully is one of the best softwares, period, I have ever seen. And same thing on the guidebook side. So Front Runners, which is the sister company to Gartner's and their famous Magic Quadrant, uh, we were in the top position for vacation rental software for our guidebook platform. One guidebook is free, by the way, so feel free to check it out, kick the tires, see if you like it. All right, but enough about Hostfully. What do you think of Hostfully? No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're so excited to have Mark Simpson. Uh, we have been 
Uh, we've had a, a professional relationship for a while. Uh, we have been a sponsor, Hostfully has been a sponsor of the Boostly podcast for a while now. And we love everything that Mark is doing and talking about how you can manage your business and, and increase direct bookings and tips on marketing and the whole nine yards. And there's just so much knowledge that, that Mark had. We didn't want to pigeonhole it on one topic. And we're like, all right, let's just open it up. And, and go for it. So on, on that note, Mark, I'd love to, to hand it over to you. And, and if there's any intro about yourself that, that you could give for you know, a couple minutes, and then uh, with our first question, uh, really broad, what is your main tip for increasing direct bookings? Yeah. Um, thank, firstly, thank you very much. And um, thank you for the intro. Uh, and it's very cool that we actually have Mr. Terry Wright in the audience. I've seen Terry's name pop up, which is so cool. And yeah, I just want to echo everything um, that you said in there. It, it, it's a fantastic guidebook and as well doing the PMS. Um, I think everybody should be checking it out. Even if you just go get your first free guidebook, just kick the tires because it is so important in 2021 to have a digital guidebook. Please don't rely on the uh, the, the printed ones, the laminated ones, because they always seem to grow legs and walk off. The best thing to do is to have your digital one and, and put it to practice. But yeah, my name is Mark Simpson and I know we've got 58% um, are um, already know who I am, part of Team Boostly. There's 42% who don't. You know, we've only got 53 minutes. So I really don't want to waste any time with, with like a boring backstory or giving you a, who information of who I am. Uh, let's just really just get straight into it. And then at the end, if you anybody wants to find out any more, I'll give you all the places on, on where you can find me. Uh, what's really important is that we are going to go through five questions that have been submitted already. But I guarantee that there'll be people in here that will have questions as well. So please do utilize the chat box. Please do utilize the, the questions box. I do want this to be as two-way as possible. Um, I don't believe in webinars where it's just one person talking ahead. I do love it when you do engage. So please do not sit on your on your hands. Uh, utilize the chat and I'll be asking questions to you and you can, you can let me know back. So David, if you could do me a favor, um, can everybody, can you be in control of the questions on the thing and just make my face small? Is that all right? And um, and then we can just sort of go from there. If you want to bring up the slide. There we go. Oh, that's even better. Let's We've do that. There we go. Let's do this. So the first question that was submitted um, was, what is your main tip for increasing direct bookings? And um, there are literally so many verticals and so many ways we, we can go down that. But if you want to know the, the best way of increasing your direct bookings, and I don't have my phone to hand uh, when I'm working, I like to have leave my phone in the car, but that is your best device right now to include increasing your direct bookings is your telephone. It's the contacts that are in your phone. And it's something that um, I've just recently revisited. Um, I've been sort of rehashing and recapping um, almost 12 years of, of, uh, of hospitality because this year I'm putting together my first ever book. Um, the first draft has been put together and it's going to be released in November, which I'm excited to tell more about when it is ready. But to, to put the book together, I had to sort of like really redig into things that I've done in the past for the family business um, uh, that worked. And one of the best things that, that, that I've done and, and one of the things that I've talked about quite a lot since is utilizing your 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 contacts, your relationships that, that, that you already have. Now, they may be friends. It could be acquaintances. It could be uh, people in the local area. It could be past guests. Um, I think what stands the test of time in any industry it's not so much of what you know, it's who you know. And it's the same in any environment. And I've worked in lots of different environments. I used to be a soccer coach. You know, I used to work in offices. I even used to do uh, garden and mulching back in the day when I was a backpacker traveling around Australia. And again, it's the, it's the same thing all the time. It's not who you know, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And this is fantastic for direct bookings because again, you can just literally get your phone out. You can just pick 10 contacts and it could be close friends or it could be just acquaintances or just anybody like that. And it can be simply a case of picking the phone up or if you're not confident in picking the phone up, you can send a text message or a WhatsApp as me and David, I try and get David on the WhatsApps, but he just is having none of it. But again, you can do a WhatsApp, a voice note, uh, you know, and just literally reach out to somebody and just there's four little words that are really, really, really important. Do you know anyone? Do you know anyone that's coming to the area? Do you know anyone that needs accommodation? Did you know that I, we've got accommodation and, and we're looking for guests? Do you know anyone who's coming to town? And, you know, if you ask 10 people 
And um, he'd be surprised at what the answer may be. If you ask 10 people and they all say no, and you ask another 10 people, if you keep going down that train, eventually someone will go, you know what, I do know somebody. And um, again, because that no like, and trust factor is there, you've already, you've already established that. And it's really, really powerful. And that's even before we get on to previous guests. You've got guests that have already stayed with you. They know you, they like you, they trust you. And again, it's super powerful and really popular. You don't even have to rely on email for this because again, a lot of the times, if a guest books with you via um, an OTA, you don't get that email address really, uh, but you all get the phone number, the WhatsApp number. And again, it's a simple thing, picking up the phone, having a call. And when, when, when I do this tactic, I always used to adopt the 80, 20 rule. So I wasn't just calling up everybody. I wasn't calling up people that came for a one night stay or, you know, fly by through. I was doing the 80, 20 rule. So I was looking at the 20% of guests that either brought in 80% of the revenue, so a real big booking, or it was 80% of people that I knew that were just really nice people, or they just had a really good time. They left that amazing review, or just, you know, if for those who have been in hospitality for a long time, there's guests that you know that now, but because they keep coming back kind of regular, they just become friends. And, and that's what I love about this business and hospitality is that um, we had guests come year after year after year to our our family business and and they were invited to mine and Laura's wedding, my wife, Laura, because they we got to know them so well. And again, it's just a case of picking up the phone when you really need it and just go, do you know anyone? So starting off the first tip is something that anybody can do. You can literally do it while I'm yabbering on. You can pick up the phone. Do you know anyone? And try it to 10 people and let me know by the end of this presentation if you get any replies. How was yeah, that? Thanks for that. Mark. That was great. Um, I think uh, the personal touch is so critical and it's, uh, that's, that's a lot more top funnel. People always think about, well, maybe the number one tip is I need a website, but you got to start even broader than that. So I, I like that. Um, I moving on to the next question. So, um, it's about uh, personal connections is one thing, but what about trust? So people tend to trust the OTA. So how do you, how do you build that into your brand and how do you encourage people to book directly through you instead of other other platforms like Airbnb? So um, before we go on to two, and it's a real good question, I would throw it up to everybody just while I'm talking on this next one. Have you tried that tactic before? Have you heard me say that before? Or even if you've never heard me say that before, have you tried what I said in slide number one about the do you know anyone and the questions? And let me know the results because again, I, I, I love giving this advice, but what I love more is when somebody tries it and gets results. So in, in, the, in, the, in the questions, and again, we've got loads of Team Boostly people, so please don't make me hang in. Please don't let me see tumbleweeds when I'm asking this question. Get the fingers out and type away in, in the chat box uh, or in the question box and, uh, and, and let me know. So, uh, okay, so question two. People tend to trust the OTAs. How do I build that trust? And this is, this is really important. Um, and the reason why the public, the general public, think that it is safer and better to book via an OTA, and not only much the general public, but hosts as well, is the marketing message that these OTAs promote. And if you want the best example, just look at the uh, podcast episode that Brian Chesky did with uh, Sway, I believe the, the podcast was called. Um, you can go and check it out. Uh, it, was, it was on LinkedIn. I saw Damien Sheridan talking about it on, on LinkedIn. And it was the question that she asked. She asked directly to Brian Chesky, are you concerned that hosts are now uh, doing the book direct. And she mentioned the book direct movement, which was fantastic. And his reiterate and his, 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 uh, his, his um, kickback to that was no, because that when a guest books via us, you get that protection, you get that cancellation policy, you get that, you know, you get, you get a protection on both sides. Now, everybody in here right now who is, uh, who is watching this, you know, that, the guest is as much protected by booking with you directly as it is on any of the OTAs. The problem is, is that the OTAs um, spend millions and millions and they've got teams upon teams coming up with this Mark NPR campaign and they've spread it and they've, they've worded it really well. Now, what we need to do is we need to fight fire with fire and we need to um, explain explicitly, but when a guest books with you directly, you get all of the same benefits and you get more benefits and you get the same protection as you would do on an OTA. Now, the problem is, is that Brian Chesky is talking about this left, right and center. They spread the message. You're not. So what can you do right now to amplify that trust? 
the easiest place to start is on your website. And you can very clearly on your homepage talk about the key reasons why someone should book with you and what happens when a guest books with you. Um, the problem is when we look at our website, we try and turn it into um, a sales page or a glossy magazine ad. We try and have flashing buttons and we try to have these spinning images and we try to have drone video foot shots and all of that. When really at the end of the day, all the guests needs to find out is who you are, why they should book with you and how they can book with you in the most simplistic terms. And that's what you need to do. We're very lucky now in 2021 that there are softwares and tools and services that can help bring that trust in. The, the number one that stands to mind is IPRAC, um, I-P-R-A-C. Um, you can just Google IPRAC and um, the company will come out and it's all about that trust. Uh, and again, um, I know the founder of IPRAC and you can just Google his name, Chris Morn, IPRAC and his story about how he created this is, is literally all around um, um, witnessing a, um, a guest that got stood up by a fake Airbnb listing uh, way back in 2013, 14. So if you can combine it, and I know I've seen a couple of people in the audience who use IPRAC, that is a great way because that you can put that, that tr trust certificate on your website and it builds up the trust. The, the, the main thing is, even without all these services and tools, is just talk about it. So please, please do start talking about it because that's the way how you will start to build that trust. Awesome. That's great. I see a follow-up question related to that too about damage protection and wondering if you have any recommendations around that. I've heard mixed reviews about Airbnb's, you know, trust and safety and their in insurance that's included and some channels don't even offer that. Uh, so if you're taking direct bookings, how can you make sure that uh, your property is protected? So I've just recently discovered, well, I say recently, in the past 18 months, discovered a company called Superhog, S-U-P-E-R-H-O-G. And what they do and what they're bringing in, uh, and they work with all of the PMSs and they work with, um, th they work with everybody in the booking process. Um, what happens is that when a guest makes the booking, um, the software kicks in from Superhog and it gets the guest to um, take a selfie, to get facial recognition, to um, basically say who they say they are. And when they do that, you as the host are then um, covered up to one million pounds worth of damages. And the cool thing is, is that you don't have to pay for this service. The guest does. So they just pay a three pound service charge and it looks just like a service charge. A service charge is, you know, anytime you use a credit card or you buy an event ticket or anything like this, they just add the service charge on. So it's a minimal service charge. You as the host, I believe you actually get 25%. No, you get 25p per time it happens. So it's like an incentive for you to use it. And it gives you that coverage. Um, I've not investigated it on a deep, deep, deep level. I've seen it on a surface level, but that's the one to me that stands out most. And I've, I, I, I know the guys who run it, really good guys who run it. And I think the way that they are, are bringing this out, I think is really exciting. That's just one. Um, I'm sure if you speak to someone like Terry White, go on to Terry's um, website. And please, Terry, if you're watching, put the web link in the chat. Um, Terry's fantastic. He, he, he loves geeking out on all of this and, and like researching every commodity and every service and tool that, that's available. And he'll be able to expand it and go into more. I know there's some more that are in the, in the U S that are more well-known, but, um, the one that springs to my mind straight away is Superhog. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We've been speaking Superhog, Guardhog. We've been speaking with, uh, with them. Uh, and also I'll, I'll give a shout out to the folks at Safely. Uh, and ensure a guest. Uh, they are both integration zone partners with Hostfully, and we have clients who have said really good things about both of them. Um, Safely not only does insurance, they also do background checks. Uh, and then we also have a cool integration with AutoHost, which does not do the insurance side, but they do background checks as well. So there's lots of options out there. Uh, you can just you know search. Uh, there's also uh, home. Uh, homeowners insurance like proper and stuff to, to protect the house um, on an ongoing basis. So there's lots of options out there. And uh, as you move beyond Airbnb specifically, or even with, if you're just on Airbnb, it's something you're going to want to look into to make sure your bases are all covered.
Fantastic. And I just want to give a, a, a special mention to Darlene because I don't think everybody can see the chat in the audience, but Darlene put in the, in the chat that uh, talking about number one with the referrals, she tried it with family members and have received some great referrals. One of them referrals is now a repeat guest. So again, start with the people that are closest to you. Start with family and just work work your way out, which, which is awesome. Nice. All right, Darlene. All right, moving on to question number three. It seems like online reputation is important to foster direct bookings. What are your top tips to help improve your brand? Yeah, I mean, we're in an industry, whether we like it or not, that we live and die by our reviews. Um, and obviously, every single person who is tuning into this is an amazing host and you give the best experience every single time and you know, you've got fantastic reviews. The problem is, is that we don't showcase them enough specifically on your website. Um, so one thing that I recommend is th there's a couple of really cool tools. Uh, one that's called Reperso, R-E-P-U-S-O. And what this tool does, and, and there's another one coming out, which is specifically for um, hospitality. I think it's called Reviews, but, um, but please do check it out. So anyway, what you can do with these kind of tools is it gathers all of your reviews coming from Airbnb, from your PMS, from Google, from Facebook, from, from anywhere on the internet. And what it does is it clusters it all together and you can set a filter system. So you can say, well, I don't want my one star review showing up, but I, you know, I want my four and five star review. So you can set the filter. So say four stars. And what it does is it updates it in real time. So whenever you get a new review come in, it updates and shows it on your website. And again, this is really powerful because one of the main reasons why people leave your website is because they're looking for that social proof. There was an insane stat um, last year, and it hasn't been updated since, but 92% of guests will look for some form of social proof before making that booking. And again, if you want to increase your direct bookings, if you want to get more people onto your website and turn lookers into bookers, you can box off so many of the potential obstacles that are going through a guest mind. But if you're not having reviews and real-time reviews on your website, then you're missing out. And the most common thing that I see, unfortunately, is that a host will go in, copy and paste a review that they found online and just bang it on the website, so to speak. And that just looks fake. You know, as, as, as honest as you may be, it literally looks fake. So if you can have it where it looks real, where it's working in real time, they can have a date on there, they can see where it's come from. It's super powerful. And again, the cool thing about Reperso, I believe still it's only nine uh, dollars a month. So return on investment wise is massive. And again, it's just, it's always working in the background. It works automatically. But, but again, um, how can you get reviews? How can you get bookings? Now we both know, uh, Danny from optimize your B and B very well. He, um, I think pretty much pioneered, pioneered this in, in his book. And he's talked about it a lot. It's all about the psychological aspect. Um, I'm going to butcher the, 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 the way to describe it. So please do go check out his book, Optimize My B&B for a better description. Um, but he basically talks about implement, implementing that five-star service into your guest's head right from the very beginning because they don't really know what a five-star stay is. So if you say to them, hey, David, thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to giving you a five-star experience when coming to stay at a property you start implementing that in. And obviously you've got to back it up. You can't say you're going to get a five star and they walk into a, a dump, so to speak. Um, but, you know, you're obviously, everybody in here has got fantastic properties. That's without saying. So you've got to start telling them that. And then, you know, give them the good service and then ask for a review. That's really key. Don't be timid. Don't be, you know, don't be shy. Shy kids don't get sweets. Ask for that review. Don't ask for a five star review, but just ask for a review. Um, one of the ways that we, our family business, uh, went from zero visibility on TripAdvisor to the top three in the space of 18 months, and this is when TripAdvisor was actually relevant. This is back in 2011, 2012. But they were, in 2012, that was like the one place you go for reviews. And the, the way that we got literally from nowhere to the top three in such a short space of time is by asking. And what we did on the back of every door because we had a bed and breakfast and rental accommodation on the back of every door in the B&B, &B, we had a little laminate 
And it basically said, leave us a review on TripAdvisor. We even had a little QR code. You know, we're ahead of our time because phones back in 2013, 2012 were shocking compared to what they are now. QR codes are everywhere. But we had a little QR code. When they scanned it, it took them straight to TripAdvisor to leave a review. And we were just always asking and we were just always subconsciously putting it into, in, into the guest mind. And if you ask, you get. And, and you combine that with everything else that we've said, it'll just really help and reap rewards. Which is, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, Randy, Randy said R E P U S O. That's how you spell it. So yeah, Randy R E P U S O. And and reviews to R E V Y O O S dot com. They're doing some cool things. I love all the uh, all the specific recommendations, not just fluff, but some good actionable items and websites and, and products that we can follow up with. That's great. So uh, Ruth, put, as Mark mentioned, we love repeat guests. And referrals is it better to offer discounts family and friends 10 percent, or something extra only so um when it comes to referrals you always got to dangle a carrot and i think this is really important and it's something that i've always done so um again we mentioned to a guest on the checkout and we we, we, we backed this up in an email a follow-up email once they've left or a follow-up automated message is that if they refer us and if somebody books and they refer them, so Ruth, then what we do is that we would send out like Amazon gift vouchers or you know, Uber Eats vouchers or, what, or whatever you want to do, just send them something as, as a thank you. Because it's, it's all well and good giving the guest like a 5%, 10% discount, the, the one who's going to book because of the referral. But I always find that it's nice to say thank you to the people that go out of their way to recommend you. And um, even though it's not the reason why they do it, I always like to say thank you and whether it's Amazon vouchers or, you know, whatever it may be, you, you may know the guest really well. If they're like a repeat guest, you may know that in their local area, they've got a favorite restaurant. You could book them in for a restaurant or a spa or something like that. Because at the end of the day, a 30, 40, 50 spend, dollar spend, if you compare that to commission costs or, you know, again, if, if that guest keeps coming back year and year again, the return of investment is untold. So, um, it really is how you do it. Um, but I find personally that when you say, come and book with us direct and save 10, 15, 20% because we're going to knock off that commission. Um, I find that it doesn't work as well as giving them incentives. So what I always say to everybody is um, save incentives for when a guest books with you directly. So for example, give them earlier check-in time. If they book on an OTA, put that check-in time back. If they check in, book of you directly, put the check-in time forward. So instead of a 5 p.m. on an OTA, do it as 2 p.m. when they book direct. Those sort of little things, because at the end of the day, not everybody wants to save money. But what they want is they want those extra benefits, whether it's a welcome hamper, whether it's free Disney, Netflix access, whatever it may be. So just sort of think outside the boxes. Not everybody's after money at the end of the day. Yeah, no, thanks for that, Mark. We've had a couple people in the audience as well say that uh, re uh, Reviews is a good platform. So, again, that spelling is R-E-Y-V-O-O-S.com. -E R-E-V. R-E-V-Y-O-O-S. We need to have a chat with oh. <laughs> Reviews. Reviews. <laughs> Google will autocorrect it anyway. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> moving on to the next question. Um, so this one's about blogging and, uh, you know, when talking about localized content and it's like a lot of managers and owners ask, you know, should I be writing on a frequent basis? Should I blog? If I, do people even care if, if I blog, what do I even write about? So what are your thoughts on that, Mark? Um, there's a really clever guy in this industry called Alan Egan. Uh, he, he had a company called Vacation Soup, but I think he's stopped doing that now to build houses in Denmark. Last time I checked in with him, he, he was busy loving that life. But um, he described this really well, is that every website should be sticky. So what that means is that if you really want to be seen on Google, if you really want the search engines to pay attention to you, and this, this works not just on Google, it works on everything. So Facebook. Airbnb, Booking.com, Verbo, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, whatever platform, YouTube, the way it works is that the longer you can get a user, let's say your future potential guest, as Danny from Optimize My BNB likes to call it, future potential guest, FPG, the longer you can get an FPG or a future guest to stick around on your listing or on your website for longer, then the more you will get rewarded in the long run. 
And um, the best way to do that, the simplest way to do that is to write content that your future potential guests will want to see and stick around. A blog is a great way of doing it. Um, now, you've got to weigh the pros and the cons. It is very time consuming to sit down and, and write a blog. A lot of people who are watching this can't even write a social media post because they go, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I literally, I'm spinning all the plates. I don't have the time. And I get it. You know, busy hospitality owner. I had um, two kids. I've, not, I've now got three kids. I went one, one more deep, um, doing literally all of the things, working with my parents, working with my wife. It's an awful combination. I don't recommend it. Having the kids, doing all of the things, loads of staff members and all of that. But yeah, I still managed to find the time to, to, to put a blog together. I mean, it was shocking. My writing is terrible, but I did it. And um, I did it enough that I got over the initial um, annoyance of it. And it's just like anything. If you do something consistently, on a repeated basis, it doesn't become a pain. I'm trying so hard not to swear. I'm really trying, a pain in the bum. It, it doesn't become a pain in the bum. It just becomes a routine. It just becomes like brushing your teeth. And you've got to stick at it consistently. Um, I think, what is it, like 360, no, like 72 or 80 days consistently. If you do something consistently, it actually becomes a routine. And um, you will be rewarded. Now, if that sounds like an absolute torture to you and you don't want to do it, the best thing to do is outsource. There are amazing writers. And the way the world is now, it's so easy to find a content writer to do blog work for you. They don't have to be writing every day. They can be doing it once a week or once a month. And again, you can pay dollars. You know, Not a lot, not a lot of dollars. You can pretty much pay under $20 for a, for a, a pretty well put together blog. Now, there's other ways to make your website sticky. Number one, have a virtual tour. So a virtual tour, if anybody doesn't know what that is, um, you know, when you go on Google street map and you can literally follow your street down and you can spy on the neighbors and all of those sort of things, that is a virtual tour and you can get them for your properties. And um, I think that virtual tours are really, really, really good, especially if you have got a property that's kind of unusual or if you your customer avatar is families. Because when they're going to spend maybe 1,000 or 2,000 euros or pounds or dollars on a, on a week or two weeks stay to come and stay with you and say they've got their family and they're bringing in another family and, and another family, they, they need to know layouts, you know, because they've got to make sure that Auntie Susan's not sleeping next to the other auntie that she doesn't like, you know, and all those sort of things. So a virtual tour is really handy for that because they can literally walk around your property on their self, on the sofa while they're watching Disney+. Plus. So... And again, if you think about it, you sit your virtual tour on your website. Now, when they come onto it, you can literally lose yourself on a virtual tour for 5, 10, 15 minutes. And that still is the equivalent of someone sticking around on, on your website. Now, the, if you compare that to a blog, you're never going to get someone sticking around reading a blog for like more than three minutes. On average, you know, you got to have someone maybe an, a minute max two minutes on your website before they bounce or leave or do something else. So <laughs> you just got to try and figure out what you would like to have on your site. Blogging is expense wise is about here. Virtual tour, they can get quite expensive unless you want to go out and get the kit and do it yourself. So you, you just got to try and weigh it all up. Um, the, the most important thing that I think everybody should be doing is that you should be posting something every single day online. Now, that may, again, sound daunting, but it really isn't. Even if it's just a post, a story, or just doing something consistently every single day, you will stay top of mind. Because every single one of you, you are in, an ambassador of your local area. Um, there are some fantastic examples out there on the land of Instagram and, and Facebook who are doing it really well, hosts to do it really well, talking about the local area, places that they like to go, places that they like to see. Because again, at the end of the day, if you can get someone to keep coming back and checking in with you on a daily basis, you're making your account sticky. And again, you will be rewarded in the algorithms, but most importantly, you're staying top of mind. So right now, everybody is planning. So they're planning on where they want to go, planning on where they can travel to, you know, but they're sort of doing the things because even, even though the world is starting to open up again, there's still so many people who are waiting for maybe vaccines 
waiting for the nod from whoever they're waiting for the nod for to go and actually make that booking and go do the traveling. And um, those of you that are sitting on your hands and doing nothing and just being reactive and just uh, waiting for the, for, for the email to ping to say you got a booking, then it's going to take a lot longer for you to get those bookings compared to everybody else who is using this time to be super proactive, posting about the day-to-day of the business, posting about things to do or what you're looking for to do in, in the area. And you do that consistently every day and you'll be top of mind. And then when you get the green light and people are confident to travel, you, you post that you're taking availability, then your inbox and your bookings will be just so much more active than those that are being reactive. So whether it's a blog, social media post, whatever you do, just do something consistently and daily and you will get reap the rewards. Awesome. So re- related to that, before I go to the next question, I, I see a question that we had uh, from the audience about how do I set up and optimize SEO? So can you, you kind of talked a little bit about it, but like what are some clear concrete tips of getting, what does SEO mean and how can you, if you're not tech savvy, how can you like optimize your, your website and, and what else can you do to, to appear in the search, Google searches? You know what, it's, it's, it's the most, because we do website design, it's the most number one asked question that we get is um, when we have a website where we rank number one and they talk about SEO. And it's, it's amazing. And I don't mean this disparately, you know, or anything like that. I say it with a smile on my face. Whenever I get this question asked, I ask back, what, what does SEO even mean? Like, what, 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 does it, what do you think SEO means? And they just literally just look at me like with a plain face and I just go, I don't know. I just thought I'd ask it. I just heard it's a buzzword. And SEO is ridiculously hard. There are experts out there that spend years trying to get ranked number one, you know, rank number one on Google. And, but the, the, the honest truth is, is that you could spend months, years, lots and lots of money hiring people, doing all of the things to try and rank for a specific keyword. And you'd manage to get to number one. But the problem is, is that even when you rank number one, you've still got a big map in the way above you, the Google map. And then you've now got rich snippets, which is a whole other conversation. And then you've got ads. So even if you manage to spend all this money, time and effort and and waste so many hours trying to do it, you're still halfway down page number one. And, you know, don't even kid yourself with page two. Nobody goes to page two. So yes, SEO is there and, and, and SEO is SEO. And there are some really good people that can do this for you. Alan Egan being number one, Damien Sheridan, uh, just just go on LinkedIn, Damien Sheridan's on there. Phil Tester from Laurels Tech, L-A-U-R-E-L-S Tech. He helps Boostly. He helps me with my SEO because I haven't got the time, the effort, the inclination to even try and get my head around it. So there are some really good people that you can pay to do it. If you want to try and give it a crack yourself, then there are plugins that can help. Yoast. Y-O-A-S-T, Yoast plugin. At Boostly, we put a Yoast plugin as standard with every one of our websites um, because people ask for it. And, you know, we do the very minimal setup and um, we just say, listen, this is all on you. <laughs> you go for it. We will do, we'll give you the basics. But the most important thing, and it's where so many people fall down, is that they write the content, they write their website for Google. So they write it with keywords in mind. That's ridiculous. That's bananas because it's not Google. that's going to come and stay with you. An algorithm is not going to prop up and knock on your door and pay you to stay with you. The guest is the user is your future potential guest. So don't fall in the trap. If you want the most shortcut way of getting to number one, pay for it. You've got to pay to play, unfortunately, in this world. So whether that's Facebook, whether that's TripAdvisor, Whatever SEO, because SEO, search engine, algor- algor- uh, search engine optimization, isn't just Google. It's Bing. It's Brave. It's Airbnb is an SEO. Um, you've got TripAdvisor's SEO. Booking.com's at SEO. Everything's got some form of search engine algorithm that you've got to try and crack. So if you want to get a shortcut to the top, pay for it. Uh, if not, then just focus on making a really good website. Go back to the first tip. The first tip that I said, 
text your people, text your friends, and then give them a link to your website. Make sure your website is amazing. Um, and if you're not sure that your website amazing, just come to Boostly. We'll give you an amazing one. And then you just literally go from there. So don't worry about SEO. It's um, and, I, and I know I'm going to get a message from Damien Sheridan calling me an idiot because <laughs> he's obviously big on the SEO, but it's, it's just, I just look at it from a, from all of the other angles um, point of view. Yeah, I'll, I'll add something to that, Mark, quickly. Um, I totally agree with you. I think the SEO discussion, as long as you're writing really good, engaging content, you don't have to worry about SEO. Google's going to rank you. It's getting smarter and smarter. If you try and game the system with keyword stuffing and all that kind of stuff, it's just it's going to be fruitless. So just if you do do content or blog, just, just focus on creating the best content possible. Don't worry about SEO. Good. And if there's any SEO people in the audience, I, I apologize. <laughs> and uh, circling back to on that first tip um, on reaching out to people you know and uh, uh, guests that you've had stay with you, I I've heard feedback from some of our clients how they set up their automated templates and triggers, which is not just like one day and five days after the guest has left, send them a thank you note and ask them if they know anyone. but even a long tail of that where 180 days, half a year later, have have a trigger set up where you reach out to them saying, are you planning to come to visit again next year? Are you gonna go skiing here in Tahoe again next year? And we just wanted to see if we can help you. We have lots of great properties. So having some automated templates and triggers that go out to guests on a timely basis, uh, in addition to having your mass email list that you're sending through MailChimp uh, is a great strategic approach. I love how we've got to question number five and we've got 19 minutes left. So yes. I'm just going to load the times for questions. So Andy, it's a great question. I will come to it, but I would just love everybody, any literal question you've got about direct bookings, please do not be shy because you've got 20 minutes to ask me before I disappear and I'm very hard to get hold of. So um, please, do, <laughs> please, do, please do get it in. And like literally in five days time, I'm going to disappear from, from the internet for a little bit. So nice. and just, uh, just please get, get, these, get these questions in. Um, so the final one. Yeah, so this is our last uh, advanced question that we were given. So as Mark said, please ask some questions on the side. We've seen some great ones coming in. We'll try to get, get around to as many as we can. Uh, how do I measure if my website is working and visitors are actually converting? Um, there's only one metric to track. <laughs> it's a simple one and it's so obvious. It's, I, <laughs> it's literally how are the bookings looking? I mean, that is very blase and a, and a very silly answer, but you know, you, there, there are many tools out there that will help you figure out if your website is, is working or not. The number one and the free one is Google Analytics. So many people have access to Google Analytics. Every Boostly website gets set up with Google Analytics built in. And a simple way of looking at it is that number one, it tells you how many people are coming to your website. Number two, it tells you which pages they're going to on your website. Number three, it will tell you where people are leaving your website. And the final one, it will tell you which websites are bringing traffic to your website. So, excuse me, it's really, really cool. And it's free tool that Google will give you. If you want a little bit more in depth, there's two other ones that I recommend. Crazy Egg, C-R-A-Z-Y, egg.com. It records your users on your website and it records the screen. So it will show you exactly where everybody goes on your website. It's a lovely tool. I've used it for Boostly for years. I literally, every Monday I geek out, I put aside 30 minutes and I just watch where people are going on the website. So it helps me to know. It helps me to know where they, where they scroll, where they start, where they click, where they don't click. Do I have to make things a little bit different? I mean, you don't have to go to that extent, but I love geeking out on these sort of things. But another one and a more simpler one is usertesting.com. So you pay 50 to $100 and it's, it's like Airbnb, but for users. And what you do is you put your parameters. So you say, build it around your customer avatar. So it'd be like, I would like a 34 to 44 four year old uh, mom of three children who is based in America, who has got this income coming in that is um, X, Y, and Z to come onto my website, scroll it, and I will set a task for them to do. So it could be, I want for you to land on the website, go and find out this property and then make a booking. And then what happens is the, the, they will go for their database. They will get some people for you. You'll pick one. That person will then record their screen and they'll talk you through everything. So they don't know you from Adam. Um, and they're just literally going to walk you through on your website, what you're doing well and not doing well. 
And again, you can hire one person, you can hire three. I like to hire five because then you've got an odd number and you can get a real good inc inclination after those five people where your website needs improving. So again, those tools are really good. Both of them are a cost. It's, it's a minimal investment. And again, every time we do something really big on Boostly, like create a new template or do X, Y, or Z, I always go on to usertesting.com because it, it just, it's, it's fantastic feedback from people who literally do not know me, do not care about Boostly in any way, shape or form. And they're just giving me that honest, honest feedback on, uh, on, on these things. And again, I used to do it for the granary and everybody as well. So that's crazy egg, user testing paid, and then Google Analytics, which is free. All right. All right. Awesome. Taking, a lot of talking. Let's open it up to some audience questions. Uh, we've got a bunch, and please keep them coming. We'll try to do the, the speed round, get to as many as possible. Uh, so one question, is it even worth being on TripAdvisor today? Some folks think it is good free publicity, but I've decided not to list on TripAdvisor. Good or bad decision? And also, I'd like, Mark, to open that up to a broader question about channels in general. Should you have a goal of eventually having 100% direct bookings, or do you always want to have a healthy mix and be getting guests from all channels that later you convert into direct, but they're a marketing arm? Yeah, let me just uh, trip advisor first. If you've got a rental property, no, 100% no. It's dead in the water. They've tried so many times. Like TripAdvisor, um, if you've got a hotel, if you've got a bed and breakfast, yeah, it's worth a punt, still worth a punt because they are trying so hard. They've got the thing called TripAdvisor Plus coming out, which is like their paid thing that they've got going on, you know, uh, which again will reward early adopters. They're trying to, they're trying to bring people back. TripAdvisor, um, since 2012, when I last think that it was a major force to reckon with is just lost itself in an identified crisis. They've, they've sort of gone from being a review platform to try and turn them into an OTA and they failed and they're trying to now figure out what they're going to do. Rentals.tripadvisor.com has never, ever worked. It's just, it's just awful. So I assume the most of the people in here are from rental accommodation. So you don't have to worry about it. Now, the next question, um, I think just because of what I do, and how I talk and all of that jazz, people assume that I am Mr. Anti-OTA, that I am all about bin off the OTAs. We don't need them, you know, uh, you know, like literally cut all ties and just solely rely on direct bookings. That is not the case. I am all about making the OTAs work for you and not the other way around. You treat them like a marketing channel. You don't rely on them. You don't build your house on their land. So yes, you need to be listed on them. Um, the, there's a bit of training, free bit of training. I've got it on my YouTube channel. So please do go and subscribe to the YouTube, boostly.co.uk forward slash YouTube. So boostly is B-O-O-S-T-L-Y.co.uk forward slash YouTube. If you go into the search on YouTube and type in listing sites, um, there's a, a 20 minute video that I recorded and it, it showed you the exact tactic that I used at the granary and I teach for over a thousand people. And it, it shows you the exact websites that you you should be listing on based on your location and based on your niche. Um, so what this will do is it, again, we're, walk, we're working through the 80-20 rule here. So it will give you the 20% of websites that come up 80% of the time. That is a very generic way of summing up that whole 20-minute training, but please do go and check it out. If you can't find it, just send me a message on Instagram at Boostly UK. Um, or email mark at booster.co.uk and I'll make sure you, you get a copy of it. And again, um, yeah, please do go and uh, please do go and check that out because it will just make sure that you are listed in all the right places. So you, but you've got to have a channel manager. You've got to have hostfully as your PMS. You've got to, you've got to make sure that you are listed everywhere. It's all coming through to one place. It's all uh, making sure you don't get double bookings and it's all, you know, your unit from your PMS is going out to all of these different channels. It's all communicating and again, it just makes your life so much easier. And, and on that note too, most good channel managers, uh, hostfully being one of them, it has a rate multiplier feature. So you can have the rates be higher uh, as it goes to Airbnb and booking.com and not just to offset their commission, but even, even more than that, make it 20% instead of 15% to have a premium. So as you're getting more and more direct bookings, 
you are still open to getting bookings from other channels. It's a great way to get direct bookings in the future, but also you're getting it at a premium, so it's more valuable. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so Phil asks, can you get removed from TripAdvisor? I'm sure you can. It's very, very hard to, because again, you've got the Google ranking and all that will just stick around. Um, but just, just keep it on there. Just keep your listing on there. It's, it's literally not, you'd be worse trying to get rid of it um, than not, because if you don't have it claimed, then someone else will just claim it on your behalf, which is even worse. So just, just have it up there. Paula, where is Mark disappearing to? I'm going, I'm just literally going off. I've got all of them. I'm still going to be here. Don't worry, Paula. I'm, still here. I'm just not going to be doing live videos or anything like that for a month. I, I need a, this, this first quarter has been pretty crazy. Re writing the book, all the things that I've done, had COVID. I need a little one month just to re regen, rechill a little bit. So I'll be back. All right. Well deserved. And I'm glad we got you in under the wire on that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I've seen a couple, a uh, couple of video questions. So let, let me ask both of those uh, combined here. So one was uh, where to put videos on Facebook, on a blog, on a website, somewhere else. And then the other is a vlog as good or better than a blog uh, for SEO or any other reason. Yeah, so that, that, that's a vlog, not a vlog, a vlog, like a video blog. But <laughs> So uh, a vlog is fantastic. So again, um, I did uh, 1,000 daily vlogs in a row. Um, and the cool thing about when you do a video blog is that you can put it on a channel called YouTube. And a lot of people uh, misassociate YouTube as being a social media channel. It isn't. It's a, it's a search engine. It's the second largest search engine in the world. And it's just coincidentally owned by Google. Um, so again, you can put those video blogs on YouTube and they will rank in the search as well. So again, you, you take a little video, um, just document your day. It was a really cool, I used to document and vlog on my phone. And then at the end of the day, I just used to take every, every video that I did, put it into an app called Quick. Q-U-I-K, it's a GoPro app. It used to turn it into a little movie for me. I didn't have to do any editing. It did it all for me, added the music. And I took that video and I posted it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn. And I did that every day for, for a thousand days. And um, yeah, fantastic. I say it's easy to do, takes no more than five, 10 minutes. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need a fancy microphone. You don't need a fancy, fancy lighting. Uh, you don't need to be in the next Casey Neistat. You can literally just do it with your phone. What was the second question? Uh, they were kind of uh, wrapped up. So is, is the vlog as good or better than a blog? Uh, and then uh, where should I put the video? So you kind of answered both yeah. of those. Um, vlog, blog, whatever you want to call it. Just just start doing something daily. I think, I think the, the thing that I learned very early on is if you are consistent and if you produce a piece of content every day for 365 days, good things will happen. Good things will happen to you. So, uh, good things happen to you and your business. So, just start today. Um, I like how yeah, I was question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, so, I know Harrow, uh, Boostly Academy member. You know, I'm with you on the book direct, uh, 100%. However, recently, 90% of my bookings come from the booking.com monsters, constants, 18% <laughs> direct, 18% uh, my direct rate and room only. Should I celebrate this and class it, as you say, as using the OTA or still try and convert these guys to a direct booking? So um, I do have some really cool little tactics on how you can convert a OTA book into a direct booking so you don't have to pay a commission. That's not for near nor now. Um, have, you go and find it on the Boostly YouTube channel. Um, but you've got to, you, like I say, you've got to use them. These guys um, spend millions, if not billions, on ad spend to make sure that they are top of mind and, and everywhere. The, the trick is, is that you've got to, like we've always said, make them work for you and not the other way around. And now with Airbnb scrapping their service charge and they're basically now charging hosts a 14, 15% commission. This works on every, the, the tactic and the training that I have and how to convert an OTA to a direct booking works even well on, on all the platforms now. So it's really cool. And it doesn't hurt your algorithm or anything like that. Just go and find it on, on the YouTube channel. And I guess, and again, if you can't find it, um, email Mark at Boostly or send me a message on Instagram at Boostly UK and I'll make sure you get it. But but yeah, um, you just got to make them work for you. It's, it's a marketing channel. Treat them like Facebook, treat them like LinkedIn, Instagram, but don't bet your house on them. Thanks, Mark. I got a couple more here. I know we've got about six minutes, so if anyone yeah. wants any last minute questions, fire, fire them in the chat. 
Yeah. Um, so let's do let's do quickly. Um, so the typical booking distribution. What is industry average? What are you seeing? What do you think is best practice versus OTAs versus direct? Like, should it be 70, 30, 50, 50? What, what are you seeing as the industry average? And what do you think is the sort of gold standard? It's a, it's a, it's a really good question. It's a really hard question to be honest, because everybody's different. Literally everybody's different, but let's just go on the assumption of 50, 50, as long as you've got more in your favor. So let's say like more than 50%, 51% in, in your favor, you, you're doing well. Um, the, when I get shocked and when I get worried is when people come to me and they say like 95% of my total income is coming in via OTA bookings. That makes me worried. That's why I, that's why I do this because it's not so much the money it's the power that the OTAs have when a booking comes in via their channel. So you are playing by their rules and I don't care what your cancellation policy is. They proved this time last year, pretty much to the day, the 25th of March, they, they showed that it doesn't matter what cancellation policy you've got, when you're booking on, when you're playing in their sandpit, they can literally tip the sandpit over and stick two fingers up at you and say, go for it, because they've never got the ability to do that. So you've got to start making sure that guests are booking directly with you on your terms, on your rates, and it just means that your life is so much easier because you get the email address, you get the phone number, you get the data, you get all of the things that you need, and there's no nagging annoying person in the background just prodding poking sending them emails and all that thing in the background it's just it's just it's better that way okay thank you um one other uh, another question from the audience is about pen penalties for promoting um direct bookings on otas do you do you know of any cases where people have been penalized on booking.com or airbnb for trying to push bookings into the direct yeah so um what i used to love and i used to love testing this and so many hosts used to get away with it. It was hilarious. But you know, in the pictures, you can upload how many pictures you want. Um, I used to see some really cool examples of the second picture in. The host would put a picture of, say, the breakfast table. And neatly placed on the breakfast table would be a business card with the phone number, the email address, the website, with a little slogan saying, call us directly for the best rates. It was hilarious. And it worked so well. Because again, the pictures is what the first thing that they see. And I, you can kind of get away with that today, but again, they crack down on it so much and they'll just send you a little slap on the wrist and say, you should remove that. Um, now, the, the worst scenario is when, um, and this happens a lot, uh, a guest messages you via, say, Airbnb and inquires about a stay. And then you can't try and take it off platform. So you'll send like an encrypted message saying you should contact me via O and then spread out your phone number like with all the things or so that like they, they won't realize trust me airbnb and booking.com they know all of this by now they will just they will slap on the wrist or even worse they'll they'll take you off the listings sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and just take the ota booking um, and i always say to this that if you have a guest that books and completes their stay with you via an ota and if they ever come back and stay with you again and they book via an OTA, you have failed massively. A guest should never repeat book with you via an OTA. Um, there's so many things that you can do, and there's so many things that I teach and show people how to how to achieve that. But like I say, when, when it comes to it, and it comes to like averages, if you just sort of make sure that you're more than 50% direct bookings to the OTA average, then you're doing all right. You're, you're doing well. Great. Another question is about language. If, uh, for example, if you have apartments in, you know, France, uh, how important is is local language on your website to to direct bookings? Again, it's all about. I think this is Ralph asking his question. Hi, Ralph. Um, so it all depends on who your customer avatar is. Now, if you think about it right now, um, whatever your customer avatar was pre uh, COVID, it's different to what it is going to be post. COVID, especially for a long time. So right now, staycations is the big one. You're going to get somebody who is going to drive one to three hours. Like I'm going away for a two day vacation in a couple of weeks and I'm driving 45 minutes. Um, you know, um, it's, you know, it's ridiculous. It's really close. Now, most of the time when it, when you're looking at staycations, obviously I'm English and living in Spain, but a lot of the times you will be speaking to somebody that is, French, for example, if we're going to go down the French narrative, right? So you will have to change your language on your website. You may have to for a couple of months or maybe the next year, change your writing. So the native language on there is French 
because the majority of people that are going to be coming on there will be French speakers or French readers, for example. And um, if you are not confident enough to write that in French, hire somebody. Upwork.com, Fiverr, it's so easy nowadays. Don't rely on Google Translate. It is shocking. Trust me, I've fumbled my way around Spanish restaurants and supermarkets through Google Translate. It doesn't work. You get a shocking look on the other end of the, of the conversation. So hire someone um, who knows what they're talking about, and it can easily be done. All right. OMG, so many great takeaways, Mark. This is awesome. For those uh, listening that are just overwhelmed with all that information, don't worry. You'll be getting an email right after this with a uh, link to a video uh, so you can watch this and hear it again and again. Uh, Mark, for people who want to learn more about what you're up to and just hear your musings, uh, where can they go? So uh, John asked the name of the book. I mean, that's the best place to send people to. So uh, right now, the first draft is done. So if you'd like to go and read the first draft, um, uh, you can go to booster.co.uk forward slash book, B-O-O-S-T-O-Y.co.uk forward slash book. I'm building a, like a, a book direct pre-release squad. And everybody who joins that gets to read the first draft. And um, basically between now and November when it's released, I'm going to be doing some cool things in there, just giving like behind the sneak peek of what we're doing. And just before the book gets released, I'm going to do a big Zoom call and we're going to just have a like a big Zoom party and I'll just go through some tips. And you get to basically see a lot of the book. Now, I will pre preface this. That it's currently being edited by somebody who is fantastically talented and is taking my brain dump, um, all my spelling errors and grammar errors, and, and she's making it into a fantastic book. So the first draft, please don't judge it. It will be some change by the time it finally comes out because the publisher wants to see it as well. And no doubt they'll, they'll want to change it as well. But if you want to join in, uh, it's literally 99p. So what's that, like a dollar, like less than a cheeseburger. And you get to join in on this journey. And what it means is that when the book comes out, you'll get an exclusive discount that you can then use that to, to buy the book uh, when, when it's properly out. So yeah, please do come and join that. Uh, for anybody who, who doesn't care about my book and just wants to find out more, wants to get all these free tips and videos I talked about, um, just go to boostly.co.uk, uh, enter your email address, and then once you've gone down that route, I'll never leave you alone for life. So if you want to find out more, just come down there. <laughs> we'll start WhatsApping you at all, all hours of the day. <laughs> oh, yeah, David has awesome. that. Awesome. Mark, thank, thank you, you so much. much. So great to connect uh, the Boostly and Hostfully folks. Uh, really appreciate your time. Glad we got to uh, fit you in before your well-deserved month off as well. So enjoy that. And uh, all the listeners, thank you very much. And please uh, check back. We have a bunch of exciting webinars on the docket coming up, including one with Airbnb and one with Verbo. We'll be making announcements for that soon. This is a quick early announcement on that. Uh, so thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you around. Thank you. Thanks for Bye having everyone. me.